Hey guys, I have run completely out of excuses to not finish this doggone saw. I've had a heck of a time kind of getting over the hump and doing the very last bit of it being the sharpening, and I couldn't quite figure out why. And then it occurred to me, well, I'm kind of scared. I'm pretty proficient, consider myself pretty proficient, at sharpening a handsaw to a rip cut pattern, but I've only done the cross cut pattern one time before, and that was resharpening a saw that was already set to that pattern. So this is kind of uh, kind of new territory for me. And the saw itself has turned out really, really nice. And so I'm a little bit afraid that I'm going to mess up the teeth on what is a pretty doggone nice saw. Well, that's kind of contrary to my philosophy of just give it a try. So here we go. Let's see if I can't make a mess of this. First, I want to show you real quick what's the difference between a rip cut pattern tooth and a cross cut pattern. A rip cut is very square. The face of it is perpendicular to the plate. So the face of it is like that rather than any, any turn like that. This turn would be called the fleam. So very square made for cutting with the fibers of the wood. The cross cut pattern has got more angle to it. You can see that it's not cut nearly as square as the rip cut is. So you look from the side and they look angled a little bit. So what that does is that makes the tips of them, each blade kind of like a little knife, slicing across the grain, across the fibers of the wood step in this process is going to be to joint these teeth and what that means is making sure that they are all the same height. I don't know if it shows up real well on the camera here but my naked eye can see that this tooth is considerably taller than all of its fellows. There's this one I believe there's one other that's pretty proud so we're going to go ahead and knock those down. The way to do that is to take a flat mill bastard file set it flat on the teeth and just run it all the way down so you do that until the tops of all the teeth have little shiny spots on them that means that you've gotten down to the level of all the teeth you don't have any short ones and what that's going to do is it's going to show you pretty quickly right here check this one out look how wide the flat spot is on that one and where's the other one? Oh, here's the other one look how wide the flat spot is on that one so it took that tooth down considerably further than it did the ones around it to get to that same level so that tooth was tall this tooth was tall and now they're all on the same level now when filing these teeth I'm gonna need to maintain this file at about a 25 degree angle here and you might guess that that's kind of a difficult task to do. Now they make all sorts of fancy tools and gauges and stuff to, to uh, keep your file at the right angle. But, you know me, I prefer to go low tech. Because what do you do if you don't have the tool? Do you stop what you're doing? Not do the job or, or not do it until you have a chance to run to town and buy this tool? I don't think so. So, what we're going to do here is... I'll take the old speed square, once I have my paper squared up here, I'll take the speed square and set it to 25 degrees. Did you know you could do that? Look over here. On a speed square, you've got 5, 10, 15, 20, kind of at weird angles. That's because when you pivot it here, set this. 25 degrees. Now, this angle right here, that's 25 degrees. So, all I got to do is get my paper squared up there. And there's my 25 degrees. Now, with that pretty well squared up to my saw plate, the paper itself. Now I have a quick, easy visual reference that's about 25 degrees.
Now the other angle that comes into play is the angle of the teeth themselves. Now these teeth should be about a 60 degree tooth. So that means that from straight up and down, the forward side of these teeth should be about 15 degrees. That's pretty doggone close. And the back side ought to be about 45 degrees. And that's pretty well spot on. So luckily I don't have to change that angle. And now I'm going to quit just yammering on about it and go ahead and get after it. Since this is um, reshaping teeth, I'm going to probably use about three strokes and see how that goes. But I want you, you want to use the same amount of strokes on each tooth. That way you sharpen them evenly. See how this works. I should also point out that I'm doing every other tooth since we have alternating sides here. I'm just doing this side of the back of every other tooth. So that one, that one, and so on. Now since I have to hit every surface, four surfaces in total, I've made it through one, and I'll flip it over. And make a pass down this side before redrawing another 25 degree angle the other way and doing this direction and then flipping it and doing this direction again. And there, there we have it. I was pretty sure that I was going to mess up the teeth. <laughs> Strike that. I was pretty sure I was messing up the teeth pretty badly at a point or two. But uh, as I kept going, it became obvious that it was rectifying itself. So, I don't think that it was a terrible job. Let's see if I can get this here for you to look at. And here it is again in focus. Who cares what it looks like if it doesn't cut well? Nice, crisp, clean cut. So that's it. I'm going to go ahead and call the restoration of this saw complete. From a $5 garage sale find to a very useful, very worthwhile, beautiful hand tool that I will have for years to come and probably pass down to my kids. Certainly didn't do it perfectly, <clears throat> but uh, I hope if nothing else, that maybe it inspired you to do your own project. So, if you liked it, you know what to do. Click that thumbs up. If you didn't like it, you also know what to do. Click the thumbs down. But please, uh, leave me a comment and let me know why you click the thumbs down if you do so. And, um, oh, subscribe. If you like seeing this kind of stuff, subscribe so that you can see it as it comes out. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate your time. I'll see you on the next video. Oh, I almost forgot to say something nice about Dave. Dave. You know Dave doesn't run with the bulls? The bulls run with Dave. <laughs>